Rejuvenous. Yeah. Oh. Should it get you feel? Listen, gentlemen, this is Boonox Communications. <laughs> it's Juvenous, baby. Hi. It's another episode of Juvenous. Our celebrity in the house today is a young man who has went through the harsh realities of life and in pursuit of a music career ended up with a record label team and now one of the next rated music artists in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. 2K. I sing to myself a lot, I just sing because I'm happy, I'm a happy child, despite the situation where I find myself. So I use music just to console myself because where I was seeing myself was not where I want to be because I want to be like some other kids who I see them way back in school, living their life, their parents just, they go for holidays, they go to stay with aunties, they go to, they just have fun, they live life with like what? But I enjoyed my own my mom at the end of the day because she taught me a lot, she taught me how to hustle. So I hawked and I was singing. So way back then when I was hawking, I was when I was hawking crazy and I was singing. So this day I called me the crazy singer. And then so most people want to wait and buy from me because I'm gonna end up in the day them gonna end up between them. So they wait for me so I can sing. And so I say, okay, sing for me. And then when I'm done singing, that's okay. So I sell most time I go like three times of the day. Okay, I just sell when I when I finish this cruising, I go and refill it again and sell them and then it happened. So when did the big break come? The when? big the the big break actually it was I was still in the street because I rec I did my first record in two thousand and five and I was recorded by Duncan Mighty, he did the first ever back the way then was a duo, me and my friend and a brother called um, Opwada Abosi and his AKS Zero P. So we, we, we made a group called um, Easy A. So way back then, Bonnie, and then we did our first recording and then it happened. But I didn't stop there and it wasn't still easy for me because I kept on pushing my music and then he, his parents, he went to school and me went to school to buy, he stopped somewhere. And had to face music fully, went to street to start and do a lot of things and, and in 2009, then 2009 I, I went for a competition in Bonny Island and then that was where I won the competition because of my LGA, my local convention, man, they planned actually a, a competition so it was held by Crafting's record. So, and then that was where Although before that I've been approaching them, so when I won that day, because the crowd was actually the judge, so I won by the vote from the crowd and everything. So then 
I didn't stay, I was not yet known in River State, in Port Harcourt. I was just there, there like that. So, and I was in Lagos when I got the call from the CEO of Grafton. Uh, and that was 2010. Then he said, um, this is a big thing from Grafton. I was like, really? This is a really big thing from Grafton? He said, yes. And I said, okay, he wants to work with me. And he's in Nigeria at the moment. And then that was how he asked me to come back to Port Harcourt. And I left Lagos the first, on the first bus straight to Port Harcourt. And when I got to Port Harcourt, I didn't go to see him that very day. I wanted to be sure. He called me again. I went the following day to school with him and I met with him and then there was, I was there talking and talking and talking and asked me some real questions and then hopefully I got signed, let me just cut the story short, I got signed with some other artists. The rest is history. Yeah, the rest is history. And today, I, that I dropped my, my first single ever was, he was, actually Big T was in UK when I did the song produced by Orbit. So when I recorded the song Run This Down and then he heard it, I was like, wow, this is going to be your official single. And then they dropped the air and the whole protocol was jumping to the whole world. professionally too far because that was the first time I had the business mind of going to the studio to record so it's been hopefully it's been um, eight years eight years now yeah okay yes. so your name is that 2k yeah. how did you evolve um 2k I suppose that my I was bearing the name called too cool too cool and I spell my cool with k k double so way back then in Port Harcourt, uh, a guy came up with the name to too cool. So, and then when I got signed to Grafton, they're like, "Oh, you cannot be bearing this name because some other person has this name. So we have to change it." So I thought about my past history, and I used to call me crazy. And I thought about the the too cool, so it stayed too. I had to just make it short, Mister uh, Two K. Okay. okay, in your first album, you did this song, "Run This Town." Yeah. What inspired you to do that song? Actually, if you listen to this song around this time, my first album, um, it's it's actually I was motivated. I was motivated by what I see around me because the song, if you listen, is actually a song. It's an authoritative song. Okay, a song that I'm telling you, I'm tired of being here. I want to be here. This is where I ought to be. Okay, I'm just tired. I just want to break through. So. I just want to break through. The song is just a breakthrough song. So I believe I have potential. I believe I have all it takes to run the city where I was. So, and I came up with that song. But the the funny part about that song is I've never told anybody, or a few, few people know, I wrote that song to give to somebody, to give to a lady, a girl. Her name is Fortune. Kudos to Fortune. I wrote, I wrote that nice song to give to Fortune. <laughs> okay. and then, then I had a meeting with Fortune and I said, okay, what's gonna happen? You have to pay me for the song. Then you also have to feature me on the song. So, and then way back then she was more known than I, than myself. I was just new this science crafting, they've not started working on my project. I just wanted something to be ah, let me let me just be out, you know. So and she didn't say anything. She was like, she wanted to hear the song, and I told her I'm not gonna sing it. I'll just read most some of the lyrics for you to hear. So that's what I did. And I said, if you're a deal, if you're a game, I'm game. And she was like, okay. She said she'll get back. She didn't get back. And the next day, they still hear the song. The song was, they did the song, the studio recorded the song, and everybody was like, wow, that was what happened to the song. That, but the song talks about being yourself. The song talks about, you know, to say there's power in the tongue. So I was speaking what I want to be at the top of it. You equally nickname yourself um, Water Side Boy after the song. <laughs> you know, reason any reason for this. Uh, I'm proud I'm proud to say the water side is a ghetto, which the normal word is waterfront, which is where where I grew up from as a as a child some years back. You know. So um 
and then my people down there, people look down on those people over there. People feel nothing actually good. Even the government of River State was fighting with them. They wanted to demolish the area back then. Then I sat down and I said, okay, how can I help? How can I help? Because they were all crying. They even the case, they, they took the case to court and everything. Some persons died in that process of demolishing the waterfront in River State. So I came up with the song with the side boy, believing that my area is my area. Okay, you don't have to judge me by my environment. Okay, yeah. You don't have to do that. Judge nobody by his, his environment. environment. You don't have Very to judge important. at all. So so I try to do that, I try to make myself, okay, fine, this place that you feel nothing good can come out. Nothing good at all. All you think of is either militants, thieves, slots. That's all you can see from them. But there are kids down there. People go to private school down there. People speak good English down there. Yeah. People live well down there. People are all there. People there. The rich, the poor, the elites, they are there. People have their houses there. Good houses are down there. So I was like, no, that's wrong. So I came up with a song because I remember what, what Big T told me that I have to be the voice for the voiceless. I have to be able to speak for those who cannot speak. So that was what I did exactly. So when he heard the song, he was like, ah, oh, we will the song. And he released the song, and the song helped people over there. And then some agency working for Amnesty International, they heard the song, and then they were like, whoa. They also took the song to court. They played the song to court during this time. So it was like, <laughs> I'll be what the side boy, what the side boy, I'll be what the side boy, you enjoy My area, my area, I'll be what the side boy, you Say what the side boy, what the side boy, I'll be what the side boy, you My area, my area, I'll be what the side boy, you Some no get, so make you no forget. Say, my God, you know be stranger, stranger. But he was born in a manger, manger. See, destiny arranger, arranger. He's a story changer, story changer. Uh, for my life, poverty in a tanda. <laughs> so far, now the success you have recorded, any nominations or award? No, nominations, yes, but no award yet for me. I've been nominated for. Um, the Niger Development Award, NDA, as the next rated, that was 2011? Yeah, I think that was 2011. 2011, 2011. And then I didn't win. And I, was, I didn't feel happy at all. I was like, I was supposed to be doing that. Too late is one. I was like, what? It's too late. It's the same guy I wrote the song for. What you want? What you want? I was like, I wasn't happy about it, you know. I was like, okay, I think there's a bigger one ahead of me. If I didn't win this one, no problem. No problem. It's not the end of NDA. It's not over yet because we have so many years to come. So if I didn't win two, it doesn't mean I came in two twelve, I came in two thirty, I came in two forty, I came in two fifteen. Twenty twenty is the year out there, so I can't win anything. So considering the the stories we hear about artists and their record label, you know, how is your relationship with Grafton Entertainment? My relationship with Grafton Entertainment is like a father and a son business because I take advice from him, I listen to him, even sometimes when, sometimes, I think my, my, my boss is like a servant leader. Kudos to Big T, Kudos to him. father and son. Yeah. You have grown me a wonderful son. So if you are out there, Big T, big up. <laughs> so, Big up to him too, big up to him, big up to him. And so it's like, my Big is like a servant leader. He's the boss, but he works for his subordinate, he works for me. He go all out to make sure that things are done properly for me. So my relationship with him is beyond, even if he tells me, okay, you have to go to this event, see, they're not paying you any money. I'm like, okay, I'm going. Because I know one thing, uh, I'm not just doing music for the money, I'm also doing it because I love it and I live it. So it's, it's my lifestyle, music is my lifestyle, so that's why. Even, I can remember a lot of that he told me uh, 2K, okay, you see this show, they're not going to pay you, it's just on the mirror, so you just have to go. Okay, and I'm like, man, you're the boss, anything you say, I mean, 
Okay, because without him, there will be no Tsuke. Without him, nobody. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. He wouldn't even have known me. And I said, well, well, he saw something in me way back then that nobody was seeing in me. And he believed in me. So, so me and my record label, like I say, it's a family business. So for those record label bosses out there, you ought to have a close-knit relationship with your artist, father relationship, and also consider yourself as a servant, like every leader, every leader you are a servant. That your leader doesn't mean that um, your subordinates are going to despise you. You know, you are the first person you are serving, of course. So that is a critical lesson for every record label CEO. So take a key for that. We also learned that you turned down the Kanye River for 2012. <laughs> sure. Tell us about it. Sure. Uh, the Kanye River, I turned it down because when they called me up, and at first, when I got the offer from them, they called for Canary 2012 in Port Harcourt. And they, they immediately told me, okay, this is what I call it. And just look at the amount of money there. They are, okay, you want to pay me lower than what you paid me the up, the last, the previous year? Canary, why? Yeah. So, so it's like, I was surprised. And, and when I had the amount of money that they put into Canary, so hundreds of millions of naira for Canary, the budget for it is like, oh, why can't you just, you can even pay me 20 million and you still have money. You get, you get, because I'm a river state boy, you can, that's the way they're supposed to support. They're even supposed to pay the indigenous artists more than the non-indigenous. Because, okay, now. And it's supposed to be a platform to empower yes, the river state empower river state youth. Now, you bring these artists from outside, they're not from River State, good, they're Nigerians. You bring them, you pay them higher. You, you don't even pay them as in, it's not even what they wanted to pay the Potakot artists. It's not even 5% or 10% of what they're paying the non indigenous So, it's like, and the problem is that me, I turned it down because I feel I'm not cheap. Though I'm a water side boy, but I don't got for granted, I'm so strict. I'm exposed. For every artist, you must maintain your ego. Because if you fall for anything, that means you get anything. Yeah. So don't fall for anything. You can see yeah. from Mr. 2K. The money was was good to some artists. Yeah. They jumped on it, they took it. They took part of it, some they, they couldn't even pay themselves the money. Man. They took part. If I call the money they're paying, it's, it's a disgrace. It's a, it's a shame. It's a shame to reverse that because River State has money. It's a shame to reverse it. If I call the money that they that they pay to the indigenous artists, those ones there, it's a shame. So I wouldn't mention the money. But what I believe they will watch and they will hear, they should work on that. Because I turn it down because I feel they deserve they they are supposed to encourage the home based artists. They're supposed to make them serious like okay. Because it's just once a year. It's check from January to December. I need to okay, how does people live? How, how will they survive? How many government shows come? Okay, you support them with that little way and then when you say oh, this they come, they jump, this one wants to get someone to get from the money. So and then we turn it down man. No, it's not like So can you reef support your indigenous Uh, before moving to Lagos, yeah. uh, what have you experienced differently you know, in the entertainment industry? <laughs> it's actually like the name goes L and P. It's too different. So the, the difference is that Lagos is one Lagos is one big market. Lagos is like the sky, it's too wide. It's very big, you have different media houses, the competition is very high, yeah? It's, it's way, way complicated because it does. Okay, this is where the whole start are. The big name, most big name in Africa, they're here. And then 
and then it's different the branding the styling the packaging everything the way you live as an artist there's some places there's some things you can do some things you cannot do yeah there's a way you cannot move ah watch the way you watch the way you talk watch the way you dress watch watch everything you have to be conscious of everything you do and what parties right you are here. listening to mr 2k right. especially those in the night of yeah. Yeah. you have to be conscious of everything your dress code the way you talk in public so the way you eat sometimes you don't have even as to eat in the public because your package so as compared to opportunities and uh, events, how has it been for you in Lagos? It has been wonderful. I've been going from one event to the other. Uh, I was doing, I was the first event I had, the first one, my coming to, to Lagos was, I was hosted in Industry Night, which was awesome for me. And I had some friends that came out to Inyanya, Chidema, the Capital family, they came out to support me. Uh, a lot of people have a song, then the rest of them, you know, so, and I have some, I have the NTM brand manager was there, um, the owner of Chocolate City was there, the TY Mix was there, a lot of people were there, a lot of prominent people in the industry were there, and some businessmen were also there to check me out, to watch what I have. And then I did a live band performance, I trilled my audience, I trilled the crowd in a way, and I just should not be ready for Lagos. So that's just it. So it's been wonderful. I think I, I did. Um, I, I was at um, Casey's show at Golden Sulu's. I was at the show, I was at uh, Egos, Egos Life. I was at, uh, I did Enigma some weeks back. And uh, some other shows that I can't really, really, really recall. But I've got, I was in a bad one for uh, um, uh, Prodigy Award. Yeah, Prodigy Award. I was, um, I can't remember but a lot of them. A lot of them. Okay, and in Lori too, I was in Lori again, man. I was just, I, I remember the time they host um they were celebrating uh a Mecca AK at Troy Lounge. I was also there, performed for him and so it's been a wonderful moving from one place to the other, you know. So now that you're in Lagos, um, what should the public expect from you next? Yeah, the public is seeing me. They, they should just be expecting more. My new videos will be coming up soon. Uh, more videos. I think I'll be dropping two videos, mad videos. I think from two creative, mad creative directors. From two, one from Clarence Peters, one from Squareball. The guy I started with, Squareball. He shot my first videos and almost uh, all my videos. You know, so. I think this is the second one that Clarence is going to be shooting. The one I featured, Chilima, Miss Kitty Kitty. And my new single that I'll be dropping, I'm dropping it. Like, man, it's called Love Me So, directed by Squabble. Finally, what's your word to your fans watching this interview? Your fans out there? Yeah, my fans out there, I just want to say keep supporting me. And don't forget, don't forget that we have Bubu Gaga Remix, UK version, okay. May 7 and more. My logo there, okay, May 7. And so, a final word to all of you watching me there keep supporting my brand, keep supporting Mr. 2K, keep supporting good music, and keep supporting Mr. 2K. Yeah, you know, so if you wanna, if you say you wanna reach me, I don't know. If you wanna reach me, it's simple. It's just at Mr. underscore 2K. That's my Twitter handle, at Mr. underscore 2K. At Mr. underscore 2K A Y. That's just simple. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll follow you back, and I'll talk to you if you want to. Alright, yes. All right, viewers, you heard from the Pupu Master, the Pupu Gaga Master, Mr. 2K, in the house. So, Mr. 2K, thanks for coming to join us, yes. and we hope we see more of you. Yes, sir. And for all those our viewers out there, don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube page, mm -hmm. Juvenis TV, follow us on Twitter at Juvenis Mag, and also add us as friends. On Facebook, Juvenis Mag. Don't forget so that you get more updates, more music videos, and a lot of stuff from Juvenis. And also, if you're an artist out there and you want to promote your videos or you want to be on this program, all you have to do is just call the numbers on your screen, and we'll be glad to invite you to our office. Till I come your way next episode, I remain your humble servant, Oxford of Malifi, saying peace. Keep me waiting, I like that your boo boo gaga. Oh, boo boo gaga, make me the reggae the raga. The reggae the raga, now I remember. I met this girl for the wamper, but, but I got girl to a bottle. Young girl, 
Don't keep me waiting. Alright, this is to you, man, Mr. 2K. Keep watching Juvenes. Keep buying Juvenes Magazine. Juvenes is published bi monthly by Pinox Communications Limited. For inquiries, event coverage, or advert placement, call 0803 360 8271. 0805 787 1199 0702 811 3638 or 0808 152 4499 or visit www.juvenis.punux.net Juvenis Magazine Inspiring the Young at Heart